Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is an antenna video. As you saw from the previous video, I was building a 4 to 1 Ballon, and it was for this antenna. Uh, what we're building today is a folded dipole. Now initially, I was a little excited because I'd heard a, an antenna described by another ham on the air, and uh, I had never actually built a folded dipole myself, and it had been 20, 30 years since I re read about them. Uh, so I misremembered something and got all excited for no reason. Uh, basically what he was describing was just a folded dipole. So I took advantage of this little poke to my mind and decided to uh, do my research and uh, bring myself up to date on folded dipoles and build one. And uh, it's a great antenna. Um, phew, man, I've, I've uh, been just surprised by how quiet it is and how strong the signals are and how well it gets out. So we're going to talk about all that as we go. Uh, folded dipoles. What are they? I mean, you think dipole, you know, two pieces of wire. What's folded how? You know, is it origami. We get a little swan out of it. No, it's a, a folded dipole is kind of like a loop that's been squished almost flat. Uh, here's a picture, a uh, simple diagram of what a folded dipole might look like. Two parallel conductors uh, with a feed point in the middle and some kind of spacing between the conductors to keep them parallel all the way across. Now it's a fairly classic antenna style or design. Um, they used to use uh, dowels, wooden dowels or plastic or ceramic insulators to space the wires. Uh, ladder line, um, uh, feed line, which you probably have seen is a good example of that. Or uh, you know, even old twin lead uh, like you'd feed from your TV antenna uh, back in the day uh, were uh, parallel conductors held apart with an insulator. Uh, I'm going to build mine out of this. This is window line, which is normally used for a feed line. It's a twin lead, two parallel wires, spaced apart by this plastic material with these holes cut in here for probably reducing material costs. Uh, I think it's called window line because these are like little windows uh, through the feed line. Uh, so this is what we're going to use for our folded dipole, so the conductors will be kept nice and parallel. Uh, in order to connect the center feed point, though, I needed uh, some kind of a structure uh, that I could lift the antenna up with and, uh, and hold on to this wire with. So I fired up the 3D printer. I went into Onshape and I designed something, and uh, well, here's a, here's a little segment about that. Well, I've completed modeling the center support for the ladder line folded dipole. The ladder line will lay across here. This ridge rides across the top of it. This hole and this hole are for punching through the center part of the ladder line, putting a couple of zip ties in to hold it rigidly to it and take off the load. This hole you can put paracord through and uh, tie it around the ladder line as well, and that would be your support structure for lifting the entire thing up. These two holes here are for screw terminals where the ladder line will join up with whatever is connecting it to the connector. Um, when I measure the impedance on the antenna initially, I'll just run straight lines right to the BNC connector, which goes in that hole right there. So, yeah, I know, somebody's going to want this in SO239, I'm making it in BNC just because I have a long coax that has a BNC connector on the end already, so that's for my convenience. Um, and, you know, I'm never going to run more than 100 watts, so I should be okay with a BNC. I suppose this could be remodeled with that hole made big enough for an SO239 connector to sit in there. Uh, but I'm building it with BNC for my tests. Um, not for full, for permanent installation, obviously it's open, although if I was going to put it up permanently, you could just dope up the connector end here with silicone um, and probably weatherproof it. This large space in the middle is where the toroids are going to go for the 4 to 1 um, current ballon that I'm going to wind while this is 3D printing. Uh, but anyway, that is the center support. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the 3D printer going get this printed out and uh, 
while that's going on, we'll make ourselves a four to one balun. So with the center uh, section complete uh, and the three or four to one balun wound, which was in the previous video, I was ready to put the antenna together. Now let's take a moment and talk about why we need that balun. Um, balun. I did it. I said balun. <sighs> What's the matter with me? Um, this line or ladder line or parallel feed line has an impedance. And at our folded dipole, when we have two conductors that are parallel to each other like that on the dipole, uh, the impedance at the feed point is going to be four times what it usually is. So instead of 50 to 73 ohms in the middle, we're going to have somewhere between 2 and 300 ohms um, impedance. And uh, I read about why that is. It's uh, something to do with the uh, phase of the currents uh, between the two wires. Uh, they're pretty much in phase, but there's some reactants. And uh, there was a, an excellent explanation of it uh, on a page. I'll, I'll link a couple of pages on uh, the techni technical side of, of folded dipoles for you. But basically, if you have two conductors in your dipole, that feed point impedance is going to be about four times what it usually would be. Um, if you add a third conductor, you know, if you have three wires in your folded dipole, then it's three squared times um, the impedance. I think it's like nine times the impedance. Uh, so yeah, it goes up with each conductor that you add. But in our case, we just have two. Um, so that's why you need a four to one ballon. And as I showed in the previous video, they're pretty easy to make. Uh, so you can wind one pretty, pretty easily or you can purchase them pre-made. Uh, now, what are the advantages of a folded dipole versus a rather regular old dipole? Uh, well, one advantage is there's an increase in bandwidth. Uh, the reasons why seem to be debatable. A lot of people have different reasons for why they think it is. Um, the one that I like is it's thicker. As you know from uh, reading about antennas, or you should know from reading about antennas, the thicker your conductor on your antenna, the broader the bandwidth. There's more skin around that conductor um, for the RF to ride on, because RF will ride right at the surface, the skin effect. It'll ride at the surface of a conductor. So this versus one wire, it's uh, um, this wire is electrically at the same potential as that one, so it's kind of like one big conductor when you th think about it. So you've got a broader a wider con uh, conductor for your antenna, so the bandwidth goes up. And that is true. Um, here is a easy neck plot of a typical single conductor dipole in free space. Uh, and you can see the SWR gets well above 1.5 to 1 at each end of the band. Now here is a sweep from my VNA sweeping the 40 meter band, which is what I cut my dipole for. And as you can see, at each end of the band, the SWR is below 1.5 to 1. So they are slightly broader in bandwidth uh, versus a regular dipole, which is nice. You know, especially on a bigger band, like uh, 80 meters, 75 meters, uh, you could cover a bigger portion of the band with a single antenna um, without having to tweak it with your tuner. Uh, they're also quiet. Uh, I haven't read much about that, but I've certainly observed it. Uh, they're, they're local noise, locally produced noise. Like I get some hash noise from uh, electronic devices in my RV, other RVs around me. Uh, here's a uh, clip where I did an AB comparison between the folded dipole and my vertical. Now there is some difference there. Vertical is omnidirectional. A dipole is less omnidirectional, especially off the ends. But both antennas are physically in the same place and physically the same distance from the noise sources. And you'll be able to see the difference um, in noise picked up by the two antennas. So I've been having a lot of fun tuning around with this antenna tonight on 40 meters. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, doesn't work well on the other bands, but it shouldn't. It's it's a mono band antenna. Um, and uh, you know the guys on the net wanted me to to do a comparison an AB switch comparison and I said well it's such a dramatic difference but okay we'll go ahead and do it anyway uh, so this is for those guys on the uh, social net so let me see I had a station here a moment ago all right uh, there's a storm going across the nation right now and this the band is just nothing but static crashes from the lightning strikes uh, the noise floor is normally s0 
in a little while. Uh, okay, this is on the folded dipole. And I'm going to switch it to the shortened vertical I normally use. So on the vertical, he's hovering around S9 just a little over. And then he stops talking. You can also hear the noise. Um, the vertical being omnidirectional picks up a lot more noise. Oh, there he is again. Nope, he's not. All right. Uh, so the folded dipole is much quieter. Oh, here he is. Okay, let's look. Hovering just a little over S9. Here's the dipole. So now he's coming up to 10 over 9. And as you can hear, there's no more noise. And it was like 7 grand, you know. And I just sold him. Folded dipole. No way. No Vertical. He'd pay for it. Folded dipole. I can almost hear that weak station. That's just those static crashes or S7. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the typical. Vertical. S7 to S8, fold the dipole, 10 over S9. So there you go, an AB can uh, an AB test between the folded dipole and my vertical. Which I knew the vertical wasn't all that great on 40. It does best on 20 and up, but. Uh, yeah, dramatic difference. So as you could see, it's a lot quieter, and the signals actually came up with it. Now, there was a difference between the antennas, of course, uh, but uh, the noise change was so dramatic, that, uh, and the antennas being in the same place, that that has got to be just a characteristic of the antenna. It's very quiet, uh, as far as locally, locally generated noise goes. Part of that might be the DC short. You know, if we look back at the diagram of the folded dipole, it's basically a DC short from this, the uh, legs of the feed line. Uh, so locally generated noise that's out of band, that's not RF, uh, in that frequency range, is going to have a nice easy path to ground across the antenna. And uh, probably that's where some of the noise um, reduction comes from. Uh, another place that it might come from, and this is just purely speculation, but the antenna, when I hang it up, um, this window line tends to twist around in the air like that. You get a little bit of a helical effect going on uh, with it. And I know that uh, with twin, twin lead feeders um, back in the day, I remember several hams mentioning that if they put a little bit of a helical twist in their feed line, it reduced common mode noise. So there could be something going on there too, but that's just speculation. So um, on the air, how's the antenna perform? Well, I uh, did a little talking the other night, checked into a couple of nets with it, and I've checked into several this morning too, and um, other days that I've been playing with it. Uh, and it gets out great. It's fantastic. Here's a little clip. Uh, testing out an antenna tonight, and uh, I uh, heard you guys chat and sounded like a friendly net, so I thought I'd hop in. Uh, let's see, I think that's it. Uh, how copy now? Over. Oh, much better, Kevin. Uh, 89 RLW 47. Yeah, you came up and leaked the next minute, if not more, but got you up above the noise. And it sounds like Jim and Martinez is copying you very well. So welcome. We're always happy to have drop-ins. You never know on the 40 meter net like this. Uh, this is this is absolutely a social net. Glad to have you. So hang on, we'll go another round. Uh, one more test. One, one more pause. See if anyone else wants to check in. Then our five minutes. Okay, we got the uh, Chris over here also. Now my antenna is cut for 40 meters. Uh, you can cut it for you know any band that you want. The standard formula for dipoles apply um, if you're calculating in feet. Uh, 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz will give you a pretty close starting point uh, for the length of your dipole. For example, for my 40 meter dipole, I started with 65 feet of the uh, window line. And that got me pretty close. I was uh, resonant at the lower part of 40 meters. So I trimmed off about 4 inches while I was tuning it. And uh, here is the plot again. Um, this is the VNA sweep of the 40 meter band. And you can see the yellow is the SWR and the cyan is the impedance. So as you can see, it's pretty broad. We're below 1.5 to 1 at each band edge. And uh, right down uh, almost to 1 to 1 at the middle. 
where the impedance crosses over the 50 ohm point. Now that is fed with coax and through the 4 to 1 ballon that I built. If you have a tuner that has input for um, balanced feed line, you can probably get just a little bit more efficiency by feeding it with uh, twin lead as well. So then you'd have a complete matched impedance and better power transfer, transfer and let your uh, tuner's internal 4 to 1 ballon um, handle the match to your 50 ohm load from your radio. It works great either way. Um, I'm never going to build just a regular dipole again, I think. Any dipole that I ever make in the future is going to be a folded dipole. I'm, I'm that convinced. It's so quiet. Um, performance is great. I'm, I'm, I'm making more contacts uh, on 40 meters than I've made previously on other antennas with each time I get on the radio. So it's, it's a great antenna. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about? Um, oh, multiband use. Uh, one downside to the folded dipole is they work great on the band they're cut for, but they do not work well at all on even harmonics. Uh, bands that are on even harmonics. So for example, my 40 meter uh, folded dipole doesn't work at all well on 20 meters. I can manage to wedge it into a, a match with the LDG tuner, um, but that's just making the radio happy. The antenna itself, its efficiency is just on even harmonics. Um, there was something I read about that. It has to do with the phase of the currents on the two conductors. And on an even harmonic, they shift to where they cancel each other. Um, so you end up with you know, virt virtually all your power being eaten by the antenna and nothing being radiated and conversed with receiving. You. You're just not that sensitive. Odd harmonic bands. Um, you still have to use a tuner because the, the SWR is going to be above 3 to 1. Uh, but the antenna will work okay on odd harmonic bands or something that's not an even harmonic. So that is a consideration. The antenna is really only going to work great for the band that it's cut for. Uh, for example, on my 40 meter dipole, a folded dipole, it doesn't work very well on 80 meters. It's useless on 20 uh, and 10. But on 15 meters, the SWR was just right around 3 to 1, so the tuner could bring it down, and it works okay on 15 meters. Surprisingly, the SWR is very low, and it works without a tuner on the low end of 6 meters. But as long as the antenna is, I don't know how well it's radiating or receiving. I'll have to wait for a band opening to test that. So that's the uh, folded dipole. Um, not too hard to make when you use something that's you know, like this window line that the uh, conductors are nice and parallel and it's easy to work with. Um, you do need a 4 to 1 ballon, but I've already talked about that. Oh, and by the way, that center structure that I made with my 3D printer, that file is up on Thingiverse and the link for it is in the description below. So you can, if you have a 3D printer, you can download and 3D print that um, to make it easier to put together. I hope you found that useful, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.